For about a decade now, all across Maine, particularly in schools, you may have seen Mr. Drew and his animals, too. He's based out of Lewiston, and he's back with us on 207. Drew, thanks for coming in. Good to have mm, you here. Thank you for having me. Uh, you go all over the state with animals educating kids and educating television audiences as well. What have you got here for us today? <laughs> today we have a prohibited species, a red-eared slider. It's a common pet turtle. Uh, this is Janice. She's about 34. Uh, about 30 years old. She's an older turtle, but uh, these guys were the most common pet turtles kept in the state of Maine or, or worldwide, actually. I remember as a kid, everybody had one of those little turtles, and they, you're telling me that if had they lived, they would have grown yeah, up to look like Yeah, you probably had the clear tray with the ramp and the palm tree. I still have mine. <laughs> I do. I still have mine because I might send it. It's so, worth yeah. something on eBay, probably. <laughs> so if, they, I'm sorry, if, if they're prohibited, why are we seeing them around? Well, there's a number of reasons. I mean, one, some people still have them. They're long-lived animals. So sometimes they got them, they went, uh, they became illegal in 2010 for stores to sell. So okay. you think that was only nine years ago. These things can live 40 years. So people might still have them from prior. Uh, the other thing is now that they're prohibited, the, nobody can, you have to find a place to get rid of them, and un unfortunately, there's no shelters will take them. So that's just, me. They just leave them near a pond or something. Yeah, a right? lot of people feel that oh, yeah, I can't find a home. I'm just going to let it go. It'll be happier. And your intentions may be good, but it's it's a terrible thing to do for our ecosystem as well as the animal. These guys are native to the United States. Their northern range is Michigan. They can survive Maine winters, wow. and so Maine is concerned that if this takes over they can do a lot of damage to our native species. What harm do they do when they're out in the wild? Well, they're competing for food. We have four species out of seven that are actually of special concern or threatened, endangered. Um, and these guys can outcompete them. Also, they're highly aggressive. These, these are very aggressive turtles. And I mean, I've seen them tearing at snapping turtles. So, you know, and automatically we assume snappers are mean. Yeah. And these guys can outdo the snappers. All so. right. Let's say goodbye to the red-eared slider for now because you've got something that's even more interesting. So Drew's going to make a little transfer here. And, and if, if Rob makes a really quick exit <laughs> out of the studio, or Peg, actually, for that matter, let's truth be told, yeah, here comes me, Spot. Yeah. Now. Wow. Hi, Spot. <laughs> what do we got here? This is Spot. This is Spot's Spot. a green iguana. He's like, what is going on? This is a green iguana. We got him. His owner had uh, cancer, and he was... This is his best friend. And oh. so he, um, he was more concerned about finding a home for Spot here than he was about the fact that he was dying of cancer. Uh, so Spot oh. came to, found his way to us. Beautiful animal, illegal in Maine again. These guys here require uh, permits um, because they can be aggressive. They do get large, obviously, you can see Clearly. that. How much yeah. does he weigh? Yeah. He's like pushing the 20 pound range, which is very big for an iguana. Uh, he was in excellent wow. health, which is also unusual for me to get a healthy one. A lot of times there's issues with them because people don't know how to care for them properly. The, and he was clearly have, loved. Well, oh, he uh, was, most certainly. These, I, I was curious, these sort of folds the skin oh, along yeah, the those, side those, of its like neck a, and stuff. This what is, is like a doorbell. <laughs> no, just kidding. Uh, <laughs> this, this is ornamental. This is merely to show oh. off how healthy he is. And this is for communication. This is called a dewlap. And he will bob his head or shake it around, maybe to intimidate somebody or to show off to the female. How, how good looking I am, and that's what that's for. <laughs> and right on his head here, Are this you is really. Peg? Thi <laughs> Check. No. Uh, right up here is actually a really neat little feature. If you look up top here, it looks like a little opal. That's actually a third eye. It's a very primitive <gasps> feature. Oh and that my. eye sees shadows. So if Gosh. he's sleeping in a tree above water, he's safe, but he can't see above him. So and if he sees a shadow, he'll know something could be coming. Does the uh, do the eyes on the side sort of do the whole range? No, that's more for the chameleon. These okay. guys do have a wide range of vision because they're on the side. Uh, so he can see quite a large way around. But they, they're not like the chameleon that can look in two directions right. at once. Right, right. And you told us, did you tell us how old he is? He's actually only seven years old. So people oh. can buy these at an <laughs> expo right or something him. for 10 bucks about this big. And they don't realize, you know, some people believe, oh, it's only going to get as big as a cage you keep it in, and that's not true. That's not true. These and how do huge. you house something like this at your place? Well, we have a large cage, and he also gets a lot of out time. We actually got a leash for him, and, and we can walk him on our leash. There you go. Uh, he's pretty good about it, so he's actually been a, a joy to have. And those are just some of the fascinating creatures that Mr. Drew has. You can learn more by going to his website, mrdrewandhisanimals2.com.